So here we have two of the most popular RTX 3070 gaming laptops on the market right now. We have the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro and the Asus Zephyrus G15. This is my condensed version of my review of these laptops. I have a 45 minute video out there that goes into almost every little detail, uh, which you can check out here if you're curious. All right, so anyways, these are both very hyped up machines and I'm gonna be quickly going over the main differences, providing gaming benchmarks and giving some advice for each, as well as some surprising results on how these two actually compare. Now I realize the Legion 5 Pro is probably more hyped up right now. You can go on pretty much any laptop suggestion thread on Reddit and there's like 40 comments all telling people to go with the Legion 5 Pro. So I was fully expecting to join that crowd once I got this machine, but I was genuinely surprised to find out that it's actually not so great. So we'll go over why I came to that conclusion in this video. First, let's talk specs. So we've got an eight core Ryzen processor on both of these. The Legion 5 Pro has the 5800H, while the G15 has the slightly better 5900HS. So you get a little bit more CPU performance on the G15. This is more noticeable in benchmarks like Cinebench. Graphics cards, you got the NVIDIA RTX 3070 on both. Um, however, the Legion 5 Pro can reach 140 watts on the GPU, while the G15 can reach 100 watts. So you've got 40 more watts going to the GPU on the Legion 5 Pro. Now this is where most people think that Legion 5 Pro should outperform the G15 in games. You know, you would think you would get 40% more performance with that 40 more watts. And I genuinely thought it would too, or at least close to that, but it doesn't. And I'm gonna show you why soon. All right, so screens. The G15 has a QHD 1440p panel. Color accuracy is amazing. Brightness is great. Yes, 300 nits is plenty. The hinge design makes it low profile. Um, Legion 5 Pro. 1600p screen with that unique aspect ratio of 16 by 10. Uh, it does get a little brighter than the G15, although I find myself turning the brightness down most of the time. It's not a night and day difference. Also that additional height is not a night and day difference either to me. Um, I'll admit it is a little bit more immersive in games, but I wouldn't pick this machine just for that screen. Um, it's just not that noticeable for me. Your productivity is not just gonna go through the roof by having that extra inch or so of height on the screen. It also sits a good bit higher when open because of that and the hinge design. Um, also, I don't recommend turning on a HDR and the Legion 5 Pro, it makes everything look washed out and bad. So I wouldn't really pass that off as a cool or unique feature. It can do it, but it's just not good at it. Uh, both of these laptops have 16 gigabytes of RAM, depending on the spec you find. Although Lenovo has been really shady about putting slower timed RAM in their laptops, especially the Legion 5 Pro. This leaves performance on the table that you should have. Um, it's kind of messed up. Luckily, mine doesn't have this slower RAM, so we're getting a fair comparison here. The G15, on the other hand, has one stick of RAM soldered to the motherboard, so you can only upgrade one of these sticks but 16 gigabytes has been plenty for me. I rendered my entire 45 minute version of this video with lots of effects and clips and it rendered in like five minutes. So 16 gigabytes is almost always plenty. All right, so now let's talk design differences. The G15 is very noticeably lighter and more compact. The Legion 5 Pro feels like a brick in comparison. And speaking of bricks, my mind is absolutely boggled at why Lenovo include this massive 300 watt charging brick with the Legion 5 Pro. No one could prepare me for how big and heavy this thing actually is. Uh, the cord is even thicker and it's not very flexible. It's crazy. I know it's getting more wattage or whatever, but God. The charging brick on the G15 is small and the cord is very flexible and easy to wrap up and throw in a bag. I'd be a lot less embarrassed to pull the G15 out of my bag in front of others, not only because of that compact design and smaller brick, but the premium and sleek look that you get without it screaming gamer. Uh, Legion 5 Pro is much more bland and dated looking in comparison to me, other than that light up logo on the back. Uh, now both units feel very sturdy. Uh, the Legion 5 Pro, yes, is a bit sturdier, but for those of you concerned about the magnesium alloy body on the G15, I wouldn't worry too much because it feels nice and it feels much sturdier than that of like the HP Omen 15. Plus it's not a fingerprint magnet. Now the keyboard decks are one of the biggest differences here. Uh, the G15 is amazing. You also get a fingerprint sensor. Keyboard feels great, it's centered. Trackpad is glass top, feels great, it's centered. You have all the controls you need and it works amazingly. Legion 5 Pro starts to lose me quite a bit with this keyboard deck. Um, I'm not a big fan of number pads or giant arrow keys, but I get that some of you might like that. Um, also, everything is just shifted so far left and it just feels really unnatural to me. Um, the keys feel sort of cheap and mushy. The trackpad is plastic and it's just awful. Um, my finger kind of like slips and bumps across it and it's really annoying. Speakers are outstanding on the G15, maybe even better than the newer MacBook Pros. They're crystal clear and they have some decent bass response. Legion 5 Pro speakers, not so great. They're kind of muddy and muffled in comparison to the G15. All right, so fan noise, this is big to me. These are two of the quietest gaming laptops I've ever used. All right, so here's how the Legion 5 Pro sounds when gaming. And here's how the G15 sounds. 
Uh, the Legion 5 Pro to me is a bit more high pitched. One thing to keep in mind here though that I don't see mentioned often is that the Legion 5 Pro's fan exhaust comes out the back of the unit. So it might sound a little quieter to you at the front of the laptop, but it'll sound a bit louder to others in the room. Now this is the opposite on the G15. The fan exhaust hits the bottom bezel and the noise kind of bounces back at you. So it might sound a little bit louder for you at the front of the laptop, but it's gonna sound quieter to other people in the room. Also, the silent mode on the G15 is a lot better than the quiet mode on the Leisure 5 Pro at staying quiet. Fans seem to randomly ramp up rather aggressively on the Leisure 5 Pro in quiet mode sometimes, uh, while the G15 stays virtually silent most all the time, um, even when running games and benchmarks without too much of a loss in performance. That being said, if I were in a library or classroom, I don't think I'd trust the Legion 5 Pro staying quiet the whole time. Uh, I'd be much more comfortable bringing the G15 in public places. Now let's talk thermals really quick. I want to go ahead and squash the hype here that Legion 5 Pro has the most superior laptop thermals ever, because it doesn't. Um, it's about average for the Ryzen 5800H, which means it runs hot. Uh, the G15 runs noticeably cooler, like 5 to 10 degrees, depending on the game, um, and almost everything. Just so you can see right here in Warzone, the Legion 5 Pro is hitting in the 90s, while the G15 stays in like the upper 70s to 80s the whole time. So yes, this is normal for Ryzen processors to run hot, especially in Warzone, but just don't believe the hype that the Legion has the best thermals. It just doesn't. It's average. As far as ports go, they're very similar here. You have your USB-C ports with DisplayPort output and charging capability. The Legion 5 Pro just has a couple more USB Type-A ports and the HDMI port is 2.1. Also, it has a webcam. Um, but for me, that doesn't matter too much because I usually use my phone as my webcam anyway because laptop webcams are usually trash. And the G15 has software built in that lets you do this. Also with the Legion 5 Pro, the ports are on the back, which I kind of find annoying, but it's good for people who plan to use this on the same desk or keep it stationary most of the time because it keeps things a little cleaner. Now people get concerned about the quality control on the G15. And this is partly because of a few units that got brought up over something similar and then all of a sudden everyone is micro-analyzing their units and finding the dumbest little small issues to complain about on the internet. Every laptop manufacturer makes some bad units. It's gonna happen. The G15 doesn't just have some insanely higher number of quality control issues than other laptops. It's just been just way over analyzed by people, so don't fall into the hype around that. At the end of the day, it's the internet. Like, for example, people get concerned about the fan exhaust hitting the bottom bezel of the screen and causing problems, but there are plenty of other laptops with this design, and I haven't personally seen any issues caused by this, at least not without some kind of underlying issue that was already there. So just remember, almost everyone has a perfectly fine and functional G15 with no issues. Don't believe the haters. So let's talk software really quick, because there's a bit of a difference here. I prefer Armory Crate here over Legion Vantage software. Uh, one, because it starts up faster, and two, because it gives you more control. You've got fan curves, wattage control, and a great little feature where you can have it automatically disable your GPU, and you can have it turn the screen refresh rate down to 60 hertz as soon as you unplug. This makes things great for battery life, as it handles all this for you. Speaking of battery, the G15 wins here by far. Without having to do anything to maximize your battery life, you can simply unplug it and this thing will last 8 to 10 hours doing simple tasks. The Legion 5 Pro I've seen get as low as an hour or two and maybe as high as like 7 or 8 hours and you have to work to get it there. I'm talking manually disable turbo boost which requires a registry edit, manually changing power profiles, manually changing your screen refresh rate, and switching to hybrid mode which requires a restart. That's a lot of work for when you just want to unplug for a while and it gets really annoying. All right. Gaming performance, the moment you've all been waiting for. But I have to preface this with a couple of very important things before we get into it, because this can make or break your experience with these laptops or even your purchase decision for either of them. So first, let's talk about the MUX switch. It's not a deal breaker to me by any means, but I do wish every laptop had this, and Legion 5 Pro does. So the Legion 5 Pro can get a little more performance to the GPU by disabling hybrid mode. It requires a restart every time, but this disables Nvidia Optimus. So basically AMD Radeon graphics are disabled here and all power is just going straight to the RTX 3070. Now you can still do this on the G15, but the only way to do it is to hook it up to an external monitor through one of the USB-C ports. Fortunately, I have an external screen, so I'll be using that to compare these two laptops with their full power to the G15. GPU, and also both in hybrid mode, and even comparing the dedicated GPU mode and the Legion 5 Pro to hybrid mode on the G15, so you get a realistic look for those of you who don't have and don't plan to buy an external monitor. Now we're not talking about a 50 frames per second improvement or anything here, but it can be useful to squeeze out those few extra frames. This is information that is missing from channels like Jared's Tech. I love that dude's videos, and don't get me wrong, but in his benchmarks, the Legion 5 Pro seems like it's a lot further ahead in games, but um, that's really just because a lot of the laptops on his list are running in hybrid mode. So I hope you guys appreciate this data because it's hard to find out there. 
The other thing I want to preface this with is native resolution. This is another thing often missing from Jared's text videos when comparing laptops. Again, I love his videos, but the fact is you're not going to want to play either of these laptops in a lower resolution than native. 1080p, for example, just will not look good on these screens. It'll be noticeably blurrier than if you were to be playing on a 1080p laptop running at its native resolution. So if you're a frame chaser, which is okay to admit if you are, you might want to look at something like the Omen 15 with a 1080p screen instead. The Legion 5 Pro is also a special case here at 1600p, even trying to play this one at 1440p you'll run into a lot of issues sometimes you lose performance sometimes the games just don't appear correctly or they get vertically stretched or they just override your settings and sometimes they just crash so unless you're just a huge fan of 16 by 9 aspect ratios you're gonna want to play at 1600p on legion 5 pro plus it just looks better and you bought a 1600p laptop so why not so that's why I've decided to compare these two laptops and their native resolution against each other, as that is how mostly everyone is going to be using them. And you'll see more of why I do that in a second. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, let's see how these do in games. So we'll start with Warzone. So on Warzone, I'm in the practice area here where the frame rates are a little bit higher than when you usually play it. So we're testing max settings here with ray tracing on, native resolution. The Zephyrus G15, when hooked up to an external monitor, is getting 113 frames per second versus the Legion 5 Pro getting only two more frames per second. Hybrid mode and Comparison is the exact same on these laptops. Moving on to enabling DLSS, you actually get a 2 FPS gain here on the G15 in dedicated GPU mode um, and a 5 FPS gain on the Legion 5 Pro in hybrid mode. So still super close. This is all like almost margin of error stuff. Now in Warzone here, for example, if you're trying to get the best comparison of how these two laptops will perform on screen only without an external monitor, then you want to look at the 120 versus 140. So sure, if you don't have an external monitor, you can get up to 20 FPS more in Warzone on the Legion 5 Pro, but this is one of the rare cases. Um, it's usually not this much of a difference, which you'll see here in a second. Moving on to control, this is max settings with ray tracing on. You really get the same whether you're in hybrid mode or dedicated GPU here. Um, the MUX switch does not seem to make much of a difference on this game. Uh, when you turn DLSS on, not sure why, but the Zephyrus G15 actually pulls ahead here a few FPS on dedicated GPU mode. Now here we have the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Again, both of these laptops perform basically the same. By this point, I was pretty baffled that there was actually 40 more watts in the Legion 5 Pro's GPU. And then I tried turning it down to 1440p on the Legion 5 Pro. And yeah, I got, you know, four more FPS here um, in dedicated GPU mode. But still, I mean, it's just barely ahead of the Zephyrus G15. You actually lose one FPS here on the Legion 5 Pro in hybrid mode at 1440p. And this is one of the few games where turning it down to 1440p actually gave a little boost in FPS. A lot of the times it would get worse when I would turn down the resolution on the Legion 5 Pro in games. Moving on to Forza Horizon 4, this is the Ultra Preset, V-Sync off, Dynamic off. The G15 is just barely behind the Legion 5 Pro here, just a few FPS, and it actually pulls ahead a good little bit in hybrid mode. Um, G15 is actually getting 12 more FPS here in hybrid mode than the Legion 5 Pro. And I found something pretty interesting in Forza Horizon 4. When I turn these down to 1080p, the G15 actually pulls way ahead of the Legion 5 Pro, especially in uh, hybrid mode. You're getting 15 more FPS there, and then you're getting 8 FPS more in dedicated GPU mode, so that was interesting. And this could just be because of a processor difference in that 5900HS versus the 5800H. Now I want to talk really quick about the Omen 15 and other 1080p laptops. As you can see right here in control on max settings and ray tracing, you're getting a whole 20 FPS more here on the Omen 15, and yes, that's because it's at 1080p. But I'm just using this to highlight my point that if you're really actually after frames here over resolution, then this is probably your best bet instead of either of these two laptops. And if you're out there, you're thinking, well, I'll take the hit on the blurriness. You know, I just want those high frames. The Legion 5 Pro is going to get me way more frames at 1080p than the Omen 15 would. But no, actually dropping the others down to 1080p, they're all about the same. Um, yeah, in hybrid mode, the Legion 5 Pro comes out a little bit ahead, but um, in dedicated GPU mode, they're just margin of error. They're barely off. They're all getting about the same frame rate here. So that's what I mean by that. If you want high frame rates, you don't want that blurriness from turning one of these down, go for a 1080p laptop. Personally, I like that little increase in sharpness and clarity on these screens versus 1080p, but that's just me. I don't really care that much about a dip in frame rate because of that. I just like to game and use my laptop at a higher resolution. So yeah, really in all these games I've tested, that additional 40 watts in the Legion 5 Pro really doesn't do much. So overall, I've got to give the crown to the G15, hands down. Not only is it perfectly capable of handling great frame rates, but it also just offers amazing portability and design. You get a better keyboard, a better trackpad, better software with more control over your fans and wattage, way better battery life, a great screen, it's lightweight, and it just feels really premium. 
you know, sure, it doesn't have a MUX switch, but if you want to get that little boost from disabling Optimus, you can just hook it up to an external monitor and then boom, you're doing just as good in games as the Legion 5 Pro and sometimes even better. Legion 5 Pro may look better on paper, but those additional 40 watts to the GPU just don't do much of anything for it. I'm not sure if this is because of some sort of implementation issue by Lenovo or software or drivers or something like that, but after seeing that the Legion 5 Pro runs hotter in games, barely gets a better frame rate, if any, and considering having to lug this heavy beast around with that massive power brick, I just don't see the point in choosing this over the G15. I'm not going to do all that just to get an extra 5 frames per second or something in Call of Duty on my laptop. Now obviously the prices and availability fluctuates a lot on these two machines. At the end of the day, both of these laptops are great machines and I'd probably take one over the other for the right price or if I just couldn't wait any longer for the other one to be available. And I know I might sound super biased against Legion 5 Pro and it might make some people mad, but believe me, I genuinely wanted to like this thing and I thought it would just blow the G15 out of the water, but the data is there, it doesn't, not even close. So, sorry? So there you have it, in my opinion, the G15 is an elegant powerhouse and i would take it any day over the legion 5 pro i really do think this is one of those laptops that can basically do it all so i hope you all liked the video if you want more content like this please subscribe and leave a like and a comment letting me know what laptops you want or what you prefer out of these two or if you just have any questions thanks so much guys see you next time